Welcome back everyone. This is a continuation of uh, acrylic painting of trees uh, in Hyde Park. Uh, I apologize for the abrupt ending of the part one. Uh, someone had called my phone and knocked the knocked the video off. Um, again, we are uh, at the point of painting um, the aspens and then after that we will do some finishing touches to uh, finish our scene here. Um, so you should be, you should have uh, white on your on your palette right now and I'm using titanium white and we're going to add just a bit of uh, lemon yellow and a tiny bit of um, a tiny bit of brown and we're just doing that to tint the uh, the white not we don't want to actually um, we don't want to actually make it a color other than white. So you don't want to add a whole bunch. So we're tinting it with yellow, with the lemon yellow and the Van Dyke brown to get the uh, off-white color. It's kind of, the aspens are kind of an ecru color. And um, it's kind of a good thing that the video before got knocked off because I had a chance to look at the video and uh, notice that you couldn't see this side of the painting so I did move it over a little bit. Um, so I'm using this angled brush. Uh, the aspens are actually, this is gonna be two two sets of two if you can see in this photograph two sets of two now you can see that there's a lot of dense uh, green right here that we don't have here actually we're going to end up making the the road just a little narrower when we finish up and of course we didn't fill in right in here because I do want to get the um, the aspens blocked in uh, because we want to make sure that that uh, we're not trying to make it harder on ourselves okay so um, I have the Van Dyke brown the lemon yellow and my titanium white and you take just more titanium white. Now notice I'm leaving the pure white over here so that I ha I can go back and add more if I want to. And just the barest amount of brown added to that. And to get it that ecru color we're going to add just a hair of yellow. And you have to keep it, you have to remember when you're mixing colors, you have to remember what you did and in what amounts or you can't remix the same color. You want some more, the yellow is very light, so you have to add a little bit more of that to alter the color. I'm really not happy with that color. It's still a little bit brown. I could use a palette knife um, to mix this. I have the bad habit of mixing with my paintbrush and you notice I keep getting the paint off of my brush and back onto the palette so that I can mix it in and there now we're starting to see some of that yellow color so we're going to use now see how I have that clump there I want to get that off because it'll it'll make it harder to draw a straight straightish line you know your trees are never completely straight they're organic and organic things are not in straight lines uh, for the most part 
Now we're going to go ahead and just make a thicker line here and then use a much thinner brush to um, to put the dark line in between to make them two colors. And this one you can see more of the trees here. And they start to get further apart as they get higher. So you're going to have them start separating up higher. I'm not too concerned with what the bottom looks like because I'm going to be covering that up. Um, these two trees, they actually crisscross each other a little bit. So, and on these, they're closer, so you can see more of the you can see more of the knotted um, the knotted look to the the tree but I will take a dark color and trim this how you can see kind of a little blobbiness I'll take the darker color and go back in and uh, trim that up so I'm making this ecru color go up high more tan than Ecru actually. Um, and this goes up high into the sky but when it's in the sky you don't see the lightness of it because it's much thinner so what you see are just sticks, dark brown sticks. You don't see the actual color of the bark. So I'm doing the second one here. And um, the aspens, um, they're kind of a straightish tree. They're not as bent over as some um, other trees. They're straight like, like the pine trees are. And, um, and they do tend to curve a little bit toward the top. Now, if you find that your paint is not, see here how it didn't flow smoothly? It, part of that is because I didn't have enough paint, but part of it is also because I, um, I didn't have enough water on my brush. And there's another little skinny one, but I'm not gonna draw that in right now because as I said, I'm gonna go back in and put a darker color to uh, to put the edges of their uh, of the trees on there. We're going to put in more of the the ground area in here to put the trees, you know, actually living here on this ground. And we're going to have another set of aspens here. These are much closer but we can't see the bottom of them because um, because we're standing so close in the picture. So, and don't be afraid to draw with your paintbrush sideways or this way, depending on how wide you want your, your aspen to be. And it's okay if it's a little bit wider than the picture. It's okay if it's a little bit narrower than the picture. Nobody has seen that picture besides you. So don't, don't worry about perfection that doesn't exist. And as you get more and more into your um, comfort with painting, um, things start coming along and you'll like your paintings more and more. But don't work them and work them and work them and work them because it doesn't make it any better. It just makes it different. And you don't want to get caught up in trying to make a perfect painting. It's, o it's okay to paint over something that you feel is less like so much of a mistake that it, you, you won't be happy. But um, don't, don't go to the extreme of, of, you know, just like redoing and redoing and redoing because 
um, it's never going to be what you want it to be. Artists being what they are, you're never going to be completely, totally happy with what you've made. I'm mixing some more of this color here because I want to do this tree right here. And notice I'm stopping bef before I get to the sky and that's so that I can use a really thin brush and go back in there and uh, get that that um, uh, fine little sticky lines there. Okay, so this is where we're going to leave it with with this color. And you're going to get a little bit more of that um, brown on the tip of your brush, just on the edge like this. Again, I'm using that Van Dyke brown. And you want to put some of the, the knots and stuff that you see on aspens. Don't go overboard. Don't go overboard because then they won't look like aspens, okay? Because it needs to have that white look to the bark. But it also has to have a few little black or brownish, they're actually brown, little spots. And those spots go side to side. They do not go up and down. They do not go in circles. They go side to side. And you just put the barest hint of these things on the back. And they're not everywhere, they're just here and there. I'm gonna blend that in a little bit in a minute. Remember this is two trees here on both of these. And then this one's closer, so we're gonna see a little bit more of it. I think I put an extra tree in here or I made one really fat. I don't know. doesn't matter because nobody's looking at my picture or going and examining the place. Now, you may have somebody who says, oh, I know Hyde Park. They're not going to know how many trees were there, where you were, exactly where you were standing. As long as it looks like an aspen, it looks like pines, it looks like a, a general scene, that's fine. It, that's going to be fine. You don't need any more than that. Now, the little sticks that are going to be coming out from here onto the dark, we don't want to put those in yet. I'm going to add on these closer ones just the hint of black to my paintbrush um, because you can see that it's not very dark and we do need it just a hair darker and my brush is getting very dry it's very dry here in Phoenix so um, you want to make sure that your keeping your brush fairly wet or the paint won't the paint won't smooth out now bark is rough so it's okay if it has like a dry brush texture to it it doesn't need to uh, flow as smoothly as the other paint so and I'm putting um, on these four foreground trees I do want to put just the barest hint of where the sun's coming from. So I added too much water that time. I'm going to put a darker side just to start making this tree look round. And I'm going to blend that in with some of my tree color. Notice I'm going side to side. 
That's because the tree is round. You need to have that look coming in side to side. Putting some of that darker color side to side over here. And the closer the tree gets to you, the more detail you're going to have to put on it. You want to make sure that um, these are starting to look like the lines that you see, not just spots, you know. You want to make sure that it looks like the lines that you see on, uh, on an aspen. And as I said, do not worry if you go out of the line of the aspen. We're going to go back over and put some of the dark trees to make them to thin this up and make this look more like uh, the skinny tree that you see. I jerked everything. I fell forward onto my. You see what I'm drawing here? No, I guess not. Yeah. Um, a lot of this front one is covered up by um, leaves. But I want to go ahead and put the shadows and stuff in as if it wasn't so that I don't have to worry about where my leaves are going to cover and where they're not. So I, sorry for the long pauses of uh, not talking. I start concentrating and then forget that you're there. So I apologize. I um, really love painting and drawing trees. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do for the tree trunks. We're going to go back in and fill in um, more of the dark color. And then we're going to add um, the thin, lighter branches, and the uh, we're going to go from there. And then all we have left to do are some of the finishing touches. So, um, as you recall from uh, the first part of this, our uh, we were using sap green with a little bit of black. Uh, to make the darker parts of the the darker parts of the of the plants, and we want to continue uh, with that. Um, so what I'm going to do is make this come up here. Make sure I get some definition in here. But you see some of this goes over, so that's why I wanted to kind of leave that. And we're going to 
finish up these trees in here. See, it's kind of naked in here. Uh, we're going to finish up these trees in here and uh, and put the tree trunks down in here and this shadowing right here. And we're going to trim these up with some of the green of the dark color. Were you able to see what I was pointing at? I can't remember. I, I, I was looking at my fingers and not at what I was showing you. I, um, okay, so I want to make sure my brush is fairly wet because not where the paint is thin, but where the paint flows smoothly on, on the on the canvas and doesn't skip because I want this to look solid. Now in the picture there's a human standing right there. I'm not drawing the human. Sometimes I don't mind putting human in the in the painting but usually it's not something I want. Um, it's not something I I think is important. Now there's a tree behind this aspen and all you can see of it are just a few of its branches. So we're going to just feather that in there and make sure that we have this shape the way we want it. And this needs to continue on the same over here. It's the same road, so it should look like the same road. And I'm going to go ahead and kind of draw, paint the separation between these trees, but I'm going to use a finer brush to really define that. So I'm working on this stand of trees right here, and they come all the way down into here. Again, I want to make sure I have plenty of paint and plenty of um, water on my paintbrush so that um, so that the trees have the look that I want. Now, this area in here is ground, so it's just a darker brown, not necessarily, um, not necessarily green. Um, I'm making that aspen look just a little bit thinner there. And this is kind of a mishmash of different colors to make up the shadow. And we're going to be painting these rocks on here as some of the final stuff. That's why I'm leaving that edge. And that's the light behind it right in here. And for some reason it is at a different level than the, than the trees behind with the road.
So um, to put that light area back there, I'm going to use brown and a lot of white, just like we did on the on the road part, but just a little bit more brown than before because it is shaded. looks more white than brown. Not happy. It, we're going to cover a lot of that up, but I still want to be happy with the color that it ended up being. So, And we're going to carry some of that color over here onto... Got my aspen where the rocks are. I, 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 they're a little grayer and that's okay. I want it, I want them to look like rocks, so. Right now they don't need form. We're just blocking in where they're gonna go. And there's kind of a green hint to them because I had, um, I had green on my brush. I'm not too worried about it because that's just the blocking in of the color. It's not um, the final color. So, help. I'm just rinsing out my brush a little bit to get more of the color that I want on the rocks. And I'm using black with a lot of white to make a kind of a gray color. It's this one here on my palette. And I know the rocks aren't black, but the shadows of them are. and. Um, we're going to work with the brown and get them back to brown color, but right now I want them black. So, and now I'm just adding black to put in this area and going over that with brown. This area is a lot of colors and you do want it to look like a lot of colors so that's why I'm blending directly here on the canvas and not on the palette because we do want it to look kind of like a mishmash of colors here because you have shadows from the trees you have the color of brown from the the road it's kind of in there um, you have rocks so it's a mishmash of colors there. Okay, I'm going to go back to my tree color now because I've given that area a little bit of time to dry. I can see one spot where it's not dry, but that's the green, so that's okay. So you're going to put tree trunks down. Um, just put several tree trunks. It doesn't have to be any particular number of tree trunks. I need more black. Um, because there's also a fence back here behind the trees and I can't tell which is which is uh, tree and which is fence so I'm I'm just calling them all trees and then I'm gonna go put the little branches over this aspen. Oh, you know, before I do that, I'm gonna switch brushes for a second. Um, I'm gonna get a very thin brush. This thinner brush right here. And I'm just gonna go 
in the black and divide these aspens. I'm going to brace my hand carefully. Now, toward the bottom of these aspens, you can't tell the difference in the in the picture. So the they're going to we're going to put the dividing line and take your time. Go slow, and it doesn't have to be perfectly straight because the trees are not perfectly straight. And you're going to just divide these trees nice and slow. And then divide this set of trees nice and slow. Alright, now let's go back and finish up that pine. So I'm just, don't completely cover up your aspen, don't go crazy. And you do want to finish up this tree going over this aspen here. Use the same techniques that we used before putting in the pines. And you're just here and there putting just a hair of pine needles over it. And a few more toward the bottom. Now these pines here are in front. So the the pines are behind them, not in front of them. And if you feel more comfortable with a thinner paintbrush, you can go and use a thinner paintbrush in here. Technically, some of that lighted area is behind these two, but I'm not gonna paint it. Um, I'm not going to overcomplicate things for myself. Now I'm just putting the edge on these trees here, just gliding down the edge of these trees. Now you can do it the opposite way where you, um, where you just put the aspens over the green and not try to put the green in second. Um, my problem with doing that is that I end up just accidentally going over my aspens and then end up doing what I'm doing right now anyway. And so why not just do what we're doing right now? You know, why why uh, go back and forth? You know, it doesn't make any sense to me, so we're not doing that. On this, I just find it easier just to go ahead and go back in and and do it only once. Now, as we uh, finish up on these aspens, I'm looking at what I've done on the sh shadow here. It's drying a little bit, and I can see more clearly what the color is, and I can see that I'm not happy, um, <laughs> which happens a lot to me. You know, I, I uh, remember I said, you know, Sometimes you're not making it better, you're just making it different. Well, sometimes that different is a good thing. 
So, um, so I'm going to go in and just change that color. That gray is just a little too much. It's too much the wrong color. I'm going to have to make it with brown. And, you know, that happens. You go and you look and you're like, okay, yeah, I don't like that. And what happens is you just uh, paint over it. We've got, we're going to use brown in the finishing touches anyway, so it's not a big deal. And that's the nice thing about um, that's the nice thing about acrylics as opposed to some other mediums. Um, they're very forgiving. You can uh, make mistakes and go back in and easily fix your mistakes. So. Okay, so um, that's where we're going to stop with the aspens for right now. We're going to finish up the foreground with the trees and the rocks. And then we're going to put in the little tiny branches of the aspen. And then the last thing is putting on the uh, aspen colors of the, the leaves. They're the lightest leaves. And so they're what they're what I want to put on first. So now I'm going to take my um, Van Dyke Brown. When we did the road before, we used burnt umber, but I want to do the Van Dyke Brown and the white, much like what the aspen color is, um, with just a hint of yellow uh, when we. When we do the finishing up the highlights in here and stuff, we want to kind of mirror this colors on the aspen a little bit to just draw that together. So I'm going to switch back to my larger brush, this one, and, um, to work on the... Uh, to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do kind of underneath where these trees are, finish up these rocks, uh, finish up in this area, and kind of get some definition to this road to make it look a little bit more interesting. And um, again, we're using Van Dyke Brown and just a bar barest hint of white and a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of yellow, just like we mixed for the Aspens. It's going to end up being slightly different color because Van Dyke Brown and Burnt Umber are different. One is redder than the other. And this time I'm putting less white because um, I want it to be darker than the Aspens just a little bit. And when I touch it to the, before I touch it to the painting, I look at the color on the brush and make sure that I'm happy with that color, and I am. So it's a little too wet. Um, but we'll fix that. While I'm looking at this, I noticed that I got the edge of that aspen all messed up, and I'm gonna very quickly um, fix that. I just grabbed the brush that I was using before and make that nice and smooth. Very easy, easy, easy. Okay. All right. And don't be afraid to go, oh, wait, I did that wrong. And then just fix it. It's not a big deal. So we're putting in some shadows from the trees here. Everything, everything in nature casts a shadow, right? These shadows are not black. We're using the the color of the of the road a little bit and just making it a little bit darker. <laughs> I live near a busy street. If you heard that, that is one of the lovely motorcycles that rides up and down the road near my house. 
and this person doesn't care if he disturbs the neighborhood. I don't think that people, you know, think about it when they're driving, <laughs> but, but you can hear them inside of somebody's house. That's kind of a loud vehicle. Okay, so we're just doing side to side on these trees. And we're going to go ahead and go in here with just a just add a little bit more brown and toward the front of it you'll be able to see the brown more than the black so go ahead and go put that in there and then put back some black in there and I'm happier with that color than I was with the um, I have a paint uh, a paper towel underneath my painting and I, I have it tucked under the canvas and I touch my brush to it to dab off water um, when I'm like wanting to add to the color a little bit. I know I just moved the painting so I hope you can still see it. Um, just to get some of the residual from the other color but not wet it you know I don't necessarily want to wet it every time and then I since I have this darker color I'm gonna put in some shadows on these rocks and some definition in between them it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to look exactly like the rocks that are there. Um, but as I said, everything has a shadow. So one rock ha will have a shadow and sometimes it'll cast a shadow on another rock. And you just want to just put some of that in there. Again, you're going to use your road color up to these aspens right here they're growing out of the ground so you want to make sure that you have the road going straight up to these aspens but there's a lot of little rocks on the ground right here and you can see them and uh, we want to make sure that we um, get that in the picture There's a lot of aspen leaves down here, so I left it open, but I'm going to just put some more dark in here just so that um, I don't have to go back in and say, oh, wait a minute, I didn't cover everything with, with uh, I didn't cover everything with the um, leaves. putting the definition in between the aspens. I don't really need it too much because there's going to be leaves, but um, you know, I do want to put a little bit. And then this, I'm going to go ahead and put a definition in here of this tree to make it nice and smooth. Of course I switched back. I just added a little bit of black to my brush and switched back to the aspen color a little bit. I mean the tree color just to make sure that my aspen looks like an aspen. Okay, now we need to add some rocks, little tiny rocks in here. This big brush is not real good for adding little tiny things. Make sure you change your paintbrush when appropriate, okay? So we're switching back to this brush. It's nice and wet and I'm getting some of the color we mixed for the ground but just a hair more white and this part is real fun you just kind of touch the paintbrush don't do it in a line don't make lines just touch the paintbrush hither and yon some a little bigger some 
a little smaller. We're going to go back in and put some definition on these to make them look more like rocks, but but you just kind of put a texture on this area. But don't get real if you're trying to make them look like rocks, it you know, it it's not going to happen. Just go ahead and just little spots of light where the light hits differently on the rocks. Don't get too caught up in in trying to draw some particular rock or some particular thing. There's a little bit of uh, a light on this. The light is just hitting this rock just a little bit. And a couple of these over here. So we're going to put some light on these rocks. And it doesn't have to be too perfect. Yeah, don't try to don't try to make perfection. Okay, so we're going to the aspen color of a very light white uh, brown color with a little bit of yellow, the color that we made for painting these. You want to add a little bit of Van Dyke brown a little bit of yellow and a lot of white, right? But I'm using this tiny little brush. Tiny little brush because we're going to make tiny little branches. And when I'm making something thin and tiny with a round tiny brush, I mix the color and then to get this brush nice and smooth, I roll it to make more of a point. And anywhere in here, it doesn't have to be perfect, you're going to put little branches. The paint needs to be fairly wet or it won't, it'll skip like it just did with me. And that's definitely not what you want. Support your arm. Try not to push very hard. I just now push too hard. And I accidentally touched the painting, so I'm just going to put put a little branch there, even though it's not in the paint in the picture. Nobody's going to examine your picture to see if it looks just like your picture. Okay? Nobody's going to go back in and, to, and give you a test. Did you draw that exactly like what you saw? So go ahead and put branches. They don't have to be any particular place, but do try to make these, these are skinny branches, so don't, don't try to make them. And the skinny branches, since they are skinny, they're harder to see. So just real lightly, don't push hard. Um, because if you push hard, you're going to, not like it and have to go back in. Now, um, most of the skinny branches that you can see are on here. I'm really unhappy with the fact that I pushed too hard and made that one branch really thick. And what's the solution to that, guys? I take my tree color, go back in with my tree color, and if I decide to do that, I'm gonna use that same brush and try to fix it, but sometimes fixing it doesn't work and just makes it better, worse. So um, make sure that you, <laughs> it would work better if I had any black left on my palette. Black on my palette is nice and dry because I do live in Phoenix. Okay, I added more black to my palette. And this should help. I'm using this skinny brush again and going in and where I'm unhappy, just the barest fix. Try not to get too set on fixing everything. Um, 
because a lot of times you make it worse. So seriously, try not to go back in and fix everything. But since I have this little brush and I have a dark color, we're gonna do some of the branches up here. They, you need to make sure that they come off of one of these trees or they won't look realistic. Okay, they need to come off of a tree and don't go as crazy as it looks in the picture because um, even though that is what's in the picture, it doesn't necessarily look right when you look at it um, in a painting. So just the barest hint of the fact that this is fall and these trees are um, losing all their branches As I paint this, I realize that I didn't get the trees exactly where they are on the on the picture, um, and I am not overly concerned with that. As I said, you know, um, nobody's going to go back in and check my picture and see if I did it right. Um, so um, because of that. The uh, the um, the branches are not exactly where they would have been. I'm adding in some evergreen to hide the fact that I put a branch where I shouldn't have. And then I'm making this tree trunk a little bit thinner here. And I want it thinner up here toward the top of this tree. So I'm adding that in too. Don't be afraid to correct your mistakes or what you perceive as mistakes. Don't be afraid to go back in. Oh, you know, I don't like the way that turned out. Um, that's not meshing well with what I'm doing right now. Don't be afraid. Go back in and see about uh, getting that the way you want it, okay? So I didn't like where it was. I fixed it, I changed it. And this, uh, this tree right here, um, I'm sorry, I keep jiggling the, the painting because I'm supporting my body so that I don't go, you know, so that I can support my arm and uh, not, not push too hard down on the paintbrush. You need to support your arm so that you don't uh, go too, too far down when you're trying to paint lightly and thinly. Um, I'm adding some branches in here and cleaning up some of these edges on this at the same time. And um, in here in the painting, in this area, there's a lot of little thin white branches. Um, I've decided not to put those in here just because I think it'll look like a mistake. Um, therefore, I'm going to make the top of this aspen because um, it has to end somehow you know you can't just have it just no top so that's going to have those darker branches and you need to push really lightly on your paintbrush 
so that uh, you don't make the really thick lines. And use the background of the of the evergreens to help you get those aspens nice and thin. Use the background to help you. And I know it looks like I'm not painting anything. You probably can't see that, but it's very thin branches I'm going for. And um, they don't show up very well. Unless you're looking at them with not through a, a lens. And right here, I'm putting just the fewest of branches on these aspens right here. All right, so now we're ready for the final touches. We're going to put the leaves on the aspens. And um, so you're going to use quite a bit of white. And we're going to, if you have a fan brush, we're going to use that. If you don't have a fan brush, um, you're going to want a wide, thin brush. Um, something like something like this one but you're gonna have to be really delicate with it um, you're going to mix um, white and you're gonna put some yellow on that uh, put the yellow near the white, not on it. And I'll explain that in a minute. And the sap green near the white, not on it. Hold on a second. I'll show you as soon as I put this on the palette. I move the white. Um, I move the white from the big blob. I moved it from here, I moved it here. And I put yellow, more yellow than green and green here. Um, and I have white on my paintbrush right now and I'm just gonna pull some yellow and make just a light yellow white color like this. And you could use a touch of orange if you have orange. Um, I'm not going to. Uh, uh, it probably, orange is a very strong color and I probably could do really uh, a very good job using orange to get this Aspen's, uh, the, the leaf color. And then you can even look at your paintbrush and those leaves am i happy with that color um, you may want to make it a little darker you may want to make it a little lighter um, don't add in the green yet okay and then you're just going to touch it touch it And don't completely obliterate your tree, the trees that you were just drawing, okay? Don't make them go away. <laughs> you spent a lot of time on those trees, so don't.
completely cover them up, but you are going to cover up a little bit of it. Not a lot, just a little. And you left this white area right here just for this purpose. And I know that it doesn't look like leaves right now. Um, it looks like white, but we're just, we're going to be building that. And while we have this white, this light color, we're going to go ahead and put some in this area too. Because you want to build the, oops, I just painted my picture. Whoops. <laughs> um. Everywhere that we left open for leaves, you're going to put this. I'm letting it get a little bit too dry. I don't want it really wet um, because we want it to make we want to make it look like leaves. Um if you're using medium yellow, it's going to look more like the aspens. I am looking at this and it is very lemon. Um, I'm going to add something called yellow ochre on my palette. Um, if you have yellow medium, it probably is the right color to begin with. And that's this color is not what I'm adding. Um, this is just a darker yellow and it'll give me more of an orange look and I'm just putting it on the tips of this brush keeping with the same color that I had and just adding it in and I'm happier with that it looks more like an aspen fall leaf color but I'm not unhappy that the other yellow is showing that's fine it just looks like light on the tree, that's all. Now, be careful that when you're blending that you don't blend it into a one solid color. It needs to stay two colors okay you need to still see both colors so don't you want them to kind of blend together a little bit but not to where it makes one color you want the interest of both colors there I don't want to paint on my painting my picture again I have it off to the side of my um, I could put it over here where it won't paint on it maybe Even though this color didn't in my picture isn't going real far up here, I'm going ahead and putting it there because I said that I had changed some of the drawing of the um, of what I had here, so I want to make sure that my painting is completed. Okay. That's when people say artistic license, that's what they mean. That you have the license to just change it for a composition or looks or what have you. Um, while I have this very light, light color, and I'm going to go ahead and put just some more branches in here that can be seen. Just to, It'll look like sunshine on these things so. 
so um, don't go overboard okay <laughs> uh, we're, we're putting leaves so we're trying to put the rest now the sap green I'm not I'm not rinsing off my brush I'm just putting the edge of it on there like this and I might want to put just a little hint of more of that darker yellow color on there and this is gonna go um, just kind of beneath what we did but not too much okay you, you there is the leaves are of the aspens during the summer they're green and so you want to show that these leaves are changing color um, but they don't look green anymore and when they are and the green that they are is a very light um, a very very light green a yellowy green so you want to make sure that that the green that you're putting in is kind of the green that you would see on on the aspens to begin with done and don't get too uh, excited to finish don't rush through it make sure that it is exactly what you like what you want um, it's harder to go back and finish than to just do it the way you want right now for instance I don't like that dark yellow on that far tree. I'm going to tone it down a little. I mean dark green. I'm going to tone it down just a bit. And for me that's better. And for you it might have been fine. You know, this is your painting. You paint it the way you want it, the way you like it. Okay. Make sure that this painting is how you want it. And I hope that you've enjoyed this. Um, there's one final thing that you need to do before we're done. Um, I'm putting some more of, I wanted leaves over this part here. Um, so now the final thing to do bef that, you, that all artists need to remember to do and many forget is that you need to sign your work get a thin paintbrush and put a lot of water on it go into whatever color on your palette that you like and sign your work it doesn't have to be huge uh, my signature looks kind of like a butterfly and um, that's it um, Thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you next time. Bye.